I'm Karen from Lion Gate Farm and today I am going to teach you how to make a felted basic armature little mouse and you can make any color mouse you want depending on what you have on hand you can make a birthday mouse you can make a Christmas elf mouse you could even make a pink mouse but I'll show you all the steps you need and all the tools you need using your materials. So follow on this little journey and we'll make a mouse. All right, a few of the tools that you need to make your mouse. One, you're going to need some armature wire. You can use a pipe cleaner. I prefer a 16 gauge armature wire. And you are going to cut that into a five and a half inch length. Five and a half using your wire cutters. So it's always good to have a pair of wire cutters. You're going to need a pair of needle nose to manipulate your wire. You'll need the needle of your choice. I'm using a 38 star felting needle. It's my go-to needle. Um, it's an all around needle. If you have a multi-tool that holds more than one needle, I prefer one with two needles. You will need core wool of your choice. We're gonna use an off-white color. It could be any color. You're never gonna see it. You'll need the body color of wool for your mouse. This is a, a, a gray Coriadale. And then I'm using a stark white for the belly. And then we have a little bit of black this is a natural black that we're gonna use for his eyes, nose. And then I actually stitch on, I actually stitch on the feet and the tail with some embroidery floss. So you'd need a fat eyed needle that the embroidery floss can stick into. Some scissors, a pencil, which we will use to manipulate our armature. So we're going to get started. We're going to get started. We're going to cut that wire. You're gonna pretend like I cut it into a five and a half inch length off my big roll. We're going to take our needle nose pliers and we're just gonna bend this little tip over. Maybe do as I say, not as I do. Bend it over and squish it. Well, that's gonna be his nose. Take your ruler you're going to bend this at about a one and a half inch bend. That will become his head. And then this is where the pencil comes in. We're going to make a little half circle here and bend it up. Now, why are we putting, you can make this mouse without a wire. So you're asking, why are we putting a wire in it? They're way more fun with wire. I like that you can move their heads around and pose them in whatever position you want when they're sitting. It's looking down, looking up, looking left. So they're pretty fun once they have a wire in them. You can make them without a wire. But then you'd build it on a skewer instead of the wire. The first thing you need to do is take your core wool and divide it. I'm take about a six inch piece off. You're gonna divide it in two set it aside and you're gonna pick up your little armature and you're gonna we're gonna wrap his head first you're gonna hold your fiber onto the armature and you're gonna wrap now when you wrap you want to make sure that your fiber is not twisting you want it nice and flat the way to do that is use this finger to hold it down and let go of it and that way if it's developed any kind of twist in the fiber, it will unwind. The reason you don't want it twisted is because that will make, it will make it not smooth. It will make it lumpy and fat. And our goal here is to build a cone shape. If you notice I went out past the end of the head, of the nose. So we're building a little cone shape. Here's where I'm gonna stab it a little bit. And actually, I should have showed you this first. 
So this is what we're going for. We're going for this little shape right here. That cone shape of his head. So in order to do that, we're gonna make this end a little bit fatter. Wrapping it to keep it smooth. Going back on itself. This is a little harder project than we did last week. And we're gonna stab it in place. Being careful not to stab ourselves. And we're gonna stab the end of his nose in. Now, if you can feel that wire in there, it's okay. Just work around it. He needs a little bit more. Needle felting is a lot of doing things by feel. So I'm just gonna wrap a little bit more around his nose, back to his head. And this time I'm gonna go back around that wire to secure it. And now I have enough in the nose end to not feel the wire. That will become important in a little while. Just stab it, connect it on. Let's go back and pick up another six inch piece, split it in half, draft it out a little bit. Let's secure it on the back of his head. And then we're gonna wrap, now we're making a reverse cone down this way. Build this up. Stab it in place. Let's add some more. So basically what we're building now is this shape, this cone shape here. So if you, oh, if you stretched him out, he would look like that. A cone at this end and a cone at that end. Just gonna keep adding fiber, wrapping. This is a lot more wrapping than stabbing at this point. Secure that on there. And I'm just adding bits at a time until I get the exact shape that I want. Again, this is subjective. Your mouse could be fat, he could be skinny. I tend to like mine fatter bottom. Now on the bottom, I just went, a, that wire is right there. I just went a little ways past it. That just shows you where the bottom of your mouse is. This time I'm using a bigger piece. mouse is getting way fat at the bottom. Now I'm going to switch to this tool. And we're just going to start getting it firmer. This is a quick and easy little project. attached to his neck. And then determine if you have enough here on the bottom to make it nice and flat. At this point, I start seeing if he'll stand up on his own. He is not standing, which means he needs some more felting back here. Start to stand now. Now we're going to add some color. So 
take whatever color you've picked. I'm gonna use this gray. Actually, maybe I shouldn't have used this gray. Could you hand me that brown? We're gonna use brown instead, just so you can see what I'm doing. So now we're just gonna tear off a little piece. We're gonna draft it out a little bit. We're gonna just wrap it on his head. Tear a little piece off. He's got his head covered and you're gonna start stabbing it in. You wanna maintain this cone shape. Especially down here by his nose. Let me switch to the other tool. Now when we go to cover the body, there's two ways you can do it. Because we want him to have a little white belly. You can cover the whole mouse with your color and then add the white. Or you can map out where the white's going to be and not add it until later. We'll do it the easier way this time and we'll cover the whole body. Here. If you don't have core wool and you just have like brown color or gray color, you can build your whole mouse out of the color. I like to use core wool on the inside because it's less expensive than buying dyed wool. And it tends to felt faster. This is a brown Coriadale called Sienna. It's a good all-around animal color for bears and reindeer and things like that. And mice. I don't know if you can hear it, but you can hear me hitting the wire every so often. Just want to be careful when you're poking it in there. You're just going to keep poking until he's nice and smooth. Sometimes that can take a little while. around the bottom any of the strays that are up around here we're gonna add a little remember you can always add color in wool but you can't always take it away unless you use scissors once it's felted in If you can 
sit up. You can sit up. can see he's starting to shrink a little bit as I poke him more because the felt is the wool is compacting as we poke it. Rotate it around so it starts to maintain his round body shape. I keep working in this neck area so he doesn't have a fat neck. Now I used a five and a half inch wire. If you want to make a bigger mouse, you can use a bigger piece of wire. If you want to make a smaller mouse, you can use a smaller piece of wire. can see he's starting to get smooth. Does he still sit up? Nope, he does not. I'm going to determine where he's not flat down here. No sit up now. Now we're going to add some little white for his belly. Tear a little piece of this off. Don't need to add a lot. Just kind of poke it on here in a little round shape. gather up the little fibers with my needles, the stray ones, poke them in. You don't necessarily want to use your needles as a tool because they are kind of fragile at the tip. So do as I say, not as I do. I'm going to add a little bit more white along this edge. Fill that in. Once you have your little belly on, we're going to make some ears. So he's just going to sit aside over here. Make sure he can sit up. He's going to sit there. And we're going to make some ears. And take a little bit of your body color, probably about that much, and divide it in half. Place it on your felting pad. This is a question I answered the other day for some people how to make some ears. So you are going to draw the shape of your ears. And in this case, it's almost a circle. You're going to draw it with your needle on the pad. And then you're going to draw the second one. And I don't know how well you can see that. But you draw that line because 
when you take your finger and fold it, it will fold at that line. And then you want to bring all of this fiber in along those lines. So you have a half circle. Actually, again, it's almost a full circle. I want to leave this fringe down here because that's how we're going to attach it to the head. Let me do it on this side, making sure these are the same. And then before it becomes too attached to your felting pad, you're going to want to move it, flip it over. These are roughly the size of a nickel that I'm working on right now. They're just about the same size. We, we want to work these a little bit. Catch all your stray fibers. And you feel like they're pretty sturdy. They don't have to be hard, but just a pretty good one piece there. We're gonna take the pink that we have. And we're just gonna get some wisps going and we're gonna add it to the middle. Cause you know, mice always have pink in their ears. And we're just going to lightly stab it in. Go again to the other side. Make the second ear match. We're close. Again, leaving fringe down here. That's how we're going to attach it. So what we do next is we take this ear and we're going to fold it in half. And right here where the fringe starts, we're going to poke it in half a little bit so that it stays. Flip it over. So we want it to stay something like that so it looks like an ear. Do the second one. Now look, I have a little white spot. We're gonna pick up our little mouse and we're kind of gonna look at this nose. We're gonna think about his nose being right there. We're going to kind of draw a triangle so his eyes will be about right there. And then one ear is going to go here. Take that fringe, stab it on, just tack it on for right now. Let's get the other ear on there, kind of in line. I'm going to stab this fringe on. So I'm going to work it from the back. To have that fringe on the bottom of the ears is necessary because it really attaches them to your animal. And you'd make ears for anything this way. And then I'm going to take a, a little bit of brown probably this much and cover it over the back. And this will build up the back of his head so he doesn't have a flat head. Let's 
look at the front and see where we're at. Here's where you're gonna position your ears. And then I'm going to work them a little bit on the felting pad. Hold this nose down. So I like the pink to be all the way around. We'll just work them a little bit more. See the pink on this one got down too low. That sometimes happens. You can hear by this poking that he's getting firmer, getting tighter and tighter the more we stab it. So where we're at now is we need to put some eyes in. So we're going to put an eyeball right there. I kind of like to make a spot where they're going to go. And we're going to put an eyeball right there. Going to come to life here in just a second. Remember, we have this little bit of black. We're going to tear off a little piece. You want to roll two tiny balls in your fingers. Just place it right there for right now. So we have two little balls. Come on. Use your needle to gather up those extra fibers. Try and keep them round. I'm going to stab on his little nose a little bit more and make it skinnier. need a nose. Again, taking a very small amount of fiber. You want to roll this into a ball and just add it to the end. Sticking out a little bit. There's two ways you can put the mouth on. You can cheat, take a Sharpie, draw it on there. If you want it super precise. Or you can take a very small amount of fiber. Just a little tiny bit. Give him a devious little smile. Now we're going to add some arms and legs with a little bit of embroidery floss. So, so far he's looking like this. So you take your large needle with a large eye and you thread some embroidery floss in here. And you want to add a knot to the end. We're going to enter in. His arm's probably going to be like here. 
what we're doing is we're going to make these little arms right here, this little arm. So we're going to come in here. We're going to loop it, go under, it's nothing fancy, it's no fancy embroidery stitch. We're just going to draw with some thread, with some looping stitches, making his little fingers. Now you could technically poke these on. I just find you get better definition. So now, right now, I'm gonna take it all the way across to his other shoulder and make another arm. Coming out for a finger. Make another finger. another finger. Now this time you're going to go all the way down to here at the bottom because we're going to make some toes. Should be able to do this all with one thread. That's the goal. Make a little toe. Another little toe. This time you're gonna go in and come over to here for his other foot. Cause that makes his third toe. And then we have one, two. Now the third one, you're just gonna go in and you're gonna come out the back. Make sure you're coming out the middle. Coming out the middle. You're going to make a knot right here to hold this thread in. I do it twice. And we have a tail. This tail's a little bit long, so we're going to cut it off. We're going to tie a knot in it so it doesn't fray. There you have his tail. Now, we have one thing we need to do. I like to cover this little knot up. On certain certain times it shows. So I just take a little bit more brown and cover that little knot up. And then I clean my mouse up a little bit. Make sure he's all tucked in. You can work around his belly, give this a little bit more definition. Let's get that other. Make sure he sits up. He's not, well, he's sitting up. He's sitting up pretty good. You can tighten him up as tight as you want him or leave him nice and soft. This guy's pretty soft. It's a personal preference. I just like to make sure all of the stray fibers are tucked in all the way around. We have a little bit down here. The more you poke, the more finished your product will look. Get it nice and smooth. If you're starting to see holes, just that means you're you're definitely getting it to a firmness factor. If you're using merino wool, you'll definitely see holes and you just want to poke until you do not. And there you have it, one little mouse. He's gonna join his mouse friends. Some have hats. Some are littler. Remember that's a shorter wire.
now, if you like our videos and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. It really helps us out. Happy felting!